Par-baking pizza dough is one of my favorite ways to meal prep pizza. I eat probably hundreds of pizzas a year, and after perfecting par-baking pizza recipes, hundreds of them, if not thousands in my life, I have some tips to share with you. So today I'm going to teach you how to par-bake pizza dough to freeze or par-bake pizza dough to bake later or just to pre-bake it before you add your toppings because that is one of my favorite ways to make pizza. So come with me and I'll share these par-baked pizza instructions and then you'll be able to make any fresh dough and then freeze pizza dough par-baked so it's easy to add toppings and bake later. You can use this guide for any store-bought dough including Whole Foods pizza dough and Trader Joe's pizza dough. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sip Bite Go channel on YouTube for more delicious restaurant style meals you can make at home. So let's get to par baking pizza dough. So let the pizza dough rise for at least 30 minutes before stretching it and then get your flour ready. You're gonna want about one tablespoon of flour and add that to a large cutting board. Then add the raw pre-made dough on top of the flour and you need to flip the dough around so it's lightly coated in the flour. Now, for this first example, I'm going to show you how I make two. So I took a knife and right there at the beginning, I cut the one bag of Whole Foods or Trader Joe's dough in half and I'm making two mini pizzas. You could also use this par baking instruction video to make just one giant large pizza, but I was creating two different toppings this particular night. So I'm going to show you how I made two at once. So then it's time to stretch out the dough. You'll see that I use a technique in a lot of my pizza dough recipes on Sip by Go and at the Sip by Go YouTube channel. And one thing I like to do is pinch the outside and then start working the inside. I picked up the pinching the outside of the dough before getting in there with my knuckles and stretching the inside from my husband who actually was working at a pizza restaurant after um, or during college. So he's quite a great chef and he's got a lot of pizza ideas as well. So the next step, it all goes by so quickly, you're basically done after stretching, but you have to do one more step here, which is to add a little olive oil to the pan. I don't know what I was doing. I was giving like cat motions. I was kind of dancing. I think I had something on TV. Anyway, so throw those puppies down on the baking sheets. I line baking sheets with some parchment paper and then I add the olive oil so the bottom of the par-baked pizza crust gets a little bit crisp. But after the par-baking step, this won't come out of the oven browned really at all. The dough will set and it will be ready. It'll be a little bit hardened and it won't. you won't be able to change the shape of it, but it won't in any way be fully cooked at all. That's why it's par-baked. So I don't know, I was just making a cute little shape here. I like when the dough is evenly um, has the same consistency throughout so I don't like one area to be too thin because then it's not going to par bake evenly. So here they're basically ready to go into the oven. I have two different toppings in mind and I'll show you what that looks like but first they par bake for about seven minutes in the oven at 450 degrees. So once the par-baked pizza dough bakes in the oven for seven minutes at 450 degrees, it's time to take them out and you can let them cool and you could freeze them or you could start topping them and doesn't, don't they look beautiful? They're so light and fluffy. This is Whole Foods dough par-baked, but I do a lot of Trader Joe's par-baked and look at my glasses. They get all foggy from the steam. Anyway, so then it's time to make the pizzas and I have so many pizza dough recipes here at Sip Bite Go that you can peruse. I love making like barbecue chicken pizza. It's one of my favorites, but I also had this tasty Alfredo sauce that I wanted to put on pizza and make it gourmet. It's um, It came in my Imperfect Produce box this particular week at Sonoma Gourmet. So I added that to the pizza. I'll just walk you through it quickly. And then I added some other toppings in the other pizza. I added some sauce too and did a little bit more traditional. Oh, these were so delicious. So anyways, once the toppings are on the pizzas, it's time to throw the pizzas back in the oven and bake them for the second and final time. So this is the step that you could do after freezing them. You could take the dough out of the freezer and thaw par-baked dough for 20 to 30 minutes before adding the toppings, or you could do them frozen, but I don't like to bake them right from frozen because the toppings are gonna cook a lot faster than the pizza will if it's from frozen. So I recommend you just think a little bit ahead and give it time to thaw or put it in the 
refrigerator the night before so it thaws that way. So when it's time to bake the pizza the second time, you actually set the oven to 500 degrees or um, whatever your recipe says to do. <laughs> I think most of mine say 500, if I can remember correctly. That's the thing. I have to look up my own recipes to make the food because for some reason the times and temperatures, there's so many of them between sous vide cooking and making pizzas and everything that my mind is just boggled with numbers. So anyways... These go in the oven with the toppings and then they bake for about eight more minutes. I was very happy to bake on this particular day. Um, so they bake for about eight more minutes and if the cheese isn't completely bubbled at that point, I will let them stay in for a couple minutes more. So once the par-baked dough has gone in with the toppings and baked for the second time, then there's like this third component where you add whatever other toppings that you like. So to the Alfredo one, I was like, let's just go completely gluttonous with this one. And on it went some prosciutto, and then it was topped, I think, with some tomatoes and just basil. So that one had quite a bit of toppings, but that Alfredo pizza was so delicious. And then uh, the other one is more like a barbecue chicken pizza with leftover sous vide chicken. I think it was sous vide fried chicken that I had made the night before. So now I'm just going to give you a really quick overview of what it would look like if I was only doing one bag of pizza dough to make one par-baked pizza. So before I was making two par-baked pizza and that dough really stretched pretty far. It was probably a more humid day and I let the dough rise in a windowsill so it was really nice and plump. But anyways, for one pizza, one really large pizza, you do the same thing where you put a little flour down on the board, you take out the dough from the bag, and then you start stretching the dough. So pinch around the outside, then push the inside, then use your knuckles underneath to really get in there and pull apart the inside. I really like this technique. I can't talk about it enough, but I do have a video all on stretching pizza dough. So once the dough has completely stretched, it's time to par-bake it. It would par-bake for the same exact time because it's not much thicker than the other little ones that I had made with half the ball of dough. So you par bake it for seven minutes at 450 degrees and then it's ready for your toppings or to freeze for later. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sip Bite Go channel on YouTube for more delicious restaurant style meals you can make at home. Well, I hope you're thoroughly inspired to get a head start on your next pizza night by par baking pizza dough to freeze or bake later. I find this really also a great way to grill pizza because you can par bake it and then grill it. So if you're throwing a little barbecue party, you can keep that in mind as well. Well, until next time, I hope you have many delicious pizza nights in your future, and I hope you have a wonderful and delicious day. Cheers! And before you head out, here are a couple other videos that you'll love.